And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. I think theme's very important for a game. I, I like and enjoy themes, but I, I sometimes wonder if designers think theme is important to a game. So you're sitting around a table and you're saying, okay, let's think of a theme for a game. What would be a good theme for a game? I know having two magicians or two sorcerers attack one another using different spells or trying to put a spell book. Hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not necessarily against fantasy, but hasn't this been done before? Maybe in multiple games? Well, anyway, theme aside, Wizard's Gambit, yay for the theme. And really, that, that kind of put me off in the game for a while, because I, I opened up the rules and I said, oh, and the we're coming back and trying to win the title of Grand Siege Mages. Yay for Wizard's Gambit. Well, actually, the gameplay isn't that bad. Basically, players are going to be collecting spells, and you're trying to get spells worth a total of 10 points. Uh, the spell's backing actually is pretty neat. It uh, looks like a spell book. Um, and the front of them shows the card the spell name, its value, and then the, basically the spell components needed for that spell. And there's all different sorts of spells worth different values. Four of these spells are placed in the middle of the table, um, just laying them around. And again, it shows the resources or the spell components needed, and then a little bit more about the spell. Now, on a player's turn, they have a hand of cards. These cards range from spell components with their name and all the unnecessary information. You'll end up calling it red, like everyone else does. Um, and special cards that basically give you a special action you can play. And then every once in a while, you will get these cards called gambits. You start the game with one, and these are very powerful cards. We'll talk about those in a minute. On your turn, you must play one of these resource cards, if you can, on a spell that's on the table. So, for example, this spell here needs this, uh, what is this, Ash of the Phoenix placed on it. So I can put this one here. This spell no longer needs Ash of the Phoenix. Now it needs the purple, green, and other color here to complete the spell. But I must pick one of these spells and play a component on it. If I play the final component needed for that spell, I then take that spell and place it on top of my spell book. The spell that's on top of my spell book gives me a special power or maybe even a negative power, depending on how big it is. For example, this is Bureaucracy. Bureaucracy is worth five points. That's half of what you need. You only need ten, so this is a great card to get. And if you notice, it needs nine resources to finish. However, once this card is in my spell book, this says, in order to play any card, you must discard a card. You may not play a card if you cannot discard. Well, that's annoying. But is five points worth having an annoying special skill? While cards that have low point values, like this one is only worth one, this says you may draw an additional card during your draw phase. See, normally you just draw a card on your turn, and this gives you that extra card, and that's a very useful thing. Now, the rules here are full of pictures, and they, they look pretty good, and there's even an explanation of the components for those who, unlike me, care. But it, it's very simple on what you do. On your turn, you play one of these, components on a spell you have to. So that's kind of, you know, oh, I'm going to play the second to the last spell a component on that spell. I sure hope that the next player doesn't have the final component to play in that spell. Then you can play one of your gambits or you can play one of your special cards. When you play a special card, you just follow the effects on that card. For example, this one says, all opponents discard a card at random. Yay! Or this one, you draw three cards and all your opponents draw one card. Okay, well that's kind of random and throws a bit of chaos into the game. Um, but then after that, you draw a card, and of course if you have this special spell in your book, you get to draw two. But you draw a card and you continue on your merry way. Gambit cards. You can play these instead of these special cards. Gambit cards can be used for three different things. One, they can be placed, here's a spell on the table, you can place this gambit card on this spell. No one else can play a component on that spell until you release the gambit, which you can do for free, and then you can maybe place the component on it. So many times, a good way to use a gambit card is to play the second to last component on a spell, place a gambit card, which lets no one else place a component on that spell, then when it's your turn, take this off and play the final component on the spell. Nice! A gambit card also can be played to basically kill another gambit card into play. You know, so it you put one there, but it doesn't guarantee that it's still going to be there when it's your turn. 
Or you can place a Gambit uh, card on top of someone's spell book. So if they have this awesome prophecy spell, which gives them an extra card each turn, you have just canceled that out. When you have a Gambit card into play for any reason, and you can only ever have one in play at a time, uh, you can not claim one of these spells in the board. So people aren't going to get Gambit happy and throwing Gambit cards all over the table. Of course, if this was the real cool Gambit, they would explode when you threw the cards with kinetic energy. But I digress. The action of these Gambit cards really does have an effect on the game, and I actually think these are more important than these special cards, these um, diminished resources and shared dreams, and these, these cards. These cards are chaotic, and you get good ones, you can use them. You don't get ones you can use. They're kind of a pain, but Gambit cards are always act the same, and I think this adds to the game. This kind of detracts. This adds. Getting the components you want can sometimes be a pain. You keep drawing and hoping to get the components you want. But it's almost as if the game's kind of like a game of chicken. When you place your resource out, which spells are you trying to take? Are you trying to go for that big spell, which gives you a lot of points, but a negative resource? But how can you be sure that you get to play the final card? you got to be careful when laying cards down. You have to lay one down if possible. But, you know, is me by me laying this component on the spell, allowing someone else to take it? All in all, the game comes out to be a whole lot lighter than it might sound. I like the idea of the special abilities, and especially that the, the cards that are weaker give you a powerful special ability. I like how the Gambit cards play and how you can use them to attack other players and defend against yourself. But all in all, the game still seems to come down to luck. The people who draw the best cards are going to win. There's not as much strategic play, and, no matter, and the more people that are involved in the game, the more chaotic it gets. It actually is okay with two or three players. Uh, more than that, it just doesn't seem as much fun. So I'm going to give this a tentative thumbs up if you can live with this magic theme and if you can live with the fact that there's going to be just, you're just going to be at the mercy of the cards and other players. Interactiveness, thumbs up. Components, eh, it's, it's nice artwork. Um, but chaos, eh, maybe a little too much for what I'm looking for. So I don't think I'm going to play this game much, or if at all, but you may like it depending on if that's the kind of style game you want. So... Come on now, let's find a better theme. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.